We're gonna jump into another game for you, friends. It's gonna be Mighty Kuisma versus Yuta Takahashi. Jessica Control versus Azorius Yorion. I know Corey's probably very happy to see Yorion getting some time in the sun. So this should be a really, really cool matchup to watch between these players. Yeah, I love watching control decks. I especially love watching control decks in the hands of Yuta Takahashi. Uh -huh. So I'm pretty excited for this one as both these players are incredible and I expect a lot of great decisions. And by a lot, I mean a lot because the game <laughs> is going to go pretty, pretty long. All right, well, get yourself settled in. Let's take a look at the opening hands here. Hmm. Mighty Quizma hasn't got the greatest opening hand. Rest in peace in a shark typhoon. I mean, sometimes that's all you need, but yeah, I don't love it. On the other side of things, Yuta Takahashi has a summary act of permission, joy disruption, mystical dispute, and two shark typhoons. Take that, Mighty Quizma. <laughs> yeah, both these decks we saw have rest in peace in the main deck. Typically, that's a good sign that you're not a deck that cares about rest in peace. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be bringing it yourself in game one. So we're not seeing any Torrential Gear Hulks. We're not seeing any Magma Opus, Mizzix's Mastery Shenanigan. None of that, right? Mm -hmm. This is very much a fair control matchup that is trying to answer the creature decks in the field. So... As this game gets underway, we're going to see a lot of land go, land go from both players as they try and pick and choose their spots. Mighty Quizma not going to run out that Narset part or Veils, knowing that, you know, there's blue over there. Likely that there's going to be a counter spell from Takahashi. Yeah, a really important matchup factor in control matchups is making sure that you're keeping pace with your opponent in terms of lands. What you really don't want to happen is your opponent gets to a point where they can cast a threat and still have mana for counter spells, and you aren't able to do the same. So we're going to see this game sort of develop where we may see Shark Typhoons being cycled at times where they're not ideally cycled, just to make sure that you're going to hit land drops on the following turns, at least for the first few turns. So both players happy to just develop their mana base, get those triumphs down as they do enter tapped. Another land here for Quizma, but like you mentioned, it's very important to hit your land drops here. So that opening hand seems like a pretty good keep at this point as the draws have been cooperating nicely here. Narset Porter Veils gonna go digging and finds another Narset and two copies of March of Otherworldly Light. Yeah, you actually see the Narset casts, and Takahashi chooses not to Mystical Dispute it, just lets it go, perhaps afraid of a counterspell from Mahdi, but there aren't any counterspells in the main deck other than Archmage's Charm and two copies of Dovin's Veto there. Hmm. So wondering then what his target would be for that Mystical Dispute, perhaps? Good old Teferi, Teferi. hanging out in hand. Hmm. Yeah, I think one thing that Takahashi might be thinking is... Yeah, Narset is good, but I have these three copies of Shark Typhoon that I can use <laughs> to pressure it. Teferi comes down with a lot more loyalty, and typically Teferi's going up. Narset is only going down, so yeah. perhaps thinking, if I use my one piece of interaction on this Narset, I, I won't be able to deal with Teferi, and this is incredible for Takahashi, because now he gets the counter Wait. and the 1-1 one -one Shark to kill the Narset, and Ugh. it... Ailey, I, I don't want to say it for sure, but I think there's a chance that Takahashi baited Mahdi into that play. It's <laughs> possible Mahdi thought because his Narset survived or resolved, mm -hmm. the coast was clear and he could go for the Teferi. And if that's the case, that's a pretty heavy punishment. I mean, do you expect anything less from the reigning world champion? Not at all. <laughs> Excellent plays all round from Takahashi so far. Has this little idiot 1-1 one, one on the battlefield. And it looks innocuous right now, but just you wait. The damage adds up over time. And Mari Quizma, facing four open mana, has stuff to do. But what is that turn? What is his turn going to look like? Now, mind you, the play from Takahashi didn't put him significantly ahead it, it kept him from being significantly behind. Mm. The game is actually pretty even right now. Yes, Takahashi has a 1-1 shark, but both players have two shark typhoons remaining, and Mahdi has an express federation and a Narset to refuel this hand. So he still has a lot to work with here, and yeah. Takahashi isn't presenting that much pressure. 
not at this moment as expressive iteration is taking a look sees a justice strike as well as a lightning helix so justice strike will do very well against the bigger sharks that are to come yeah with bigger sharks and hall of storm giants available to yuda i mm -hmm. think justice strike is likely the one you want to take into your hand and madi needs to think whether he wants to potentially try to resolve a narset here or if he's just going to go for the lightning helix on that shark i think it's more likely that he'll just try to clean up the board so Lightning Helix into Exile. Robin Triumph is going to hit the battlefield. Got to go it for it. Like, yeah, it looks like he wants to give Takahashi the potential opportunity to maybe do something on the end step before considering this Helix. Huh. But I'm not surprised that Mari actually values keeping his mana up to make sure Takahashi feels some kind of pressure mm. from something like an Archmage's Charm that would stop him from casting a Teferi as Mari doesn't have great answers to the Planeswalker right now. Hello, Fountain is a draw here from Mighty Quizma. He's got a couple Shark Typhoons, a redundant rest in peace at this point. And Narset Potter Veils who can go digging for something a little more juicy. Yeah, making sure that he leaves up that triple blue. This is a consistent story that Mahdi is going to be trying to tell Ooh. throughout these next few turns. And, you know, this <laughs> this is having too much. This is overhitting. With Narset, mm -hmm. you're usually hoping to hit a good card. But in that specific spot, Mahdi hit too much. <laughs> yeah, very many good cards there. And unfortunately, can't take them all. And here we're going to see a 4-4 Shark being created on the end step here, but just a strike is going to take care of that pretty swiftly. Yeah, this is how we drew it up. Uh, it's pretty perfect here to still have the mana up for the Dovin's Veto, and Yuda does have available to him land, activate Hall, try to kill this Narset, but by doing so, all of his mana is gone, and mm. that's not really a game you can afford to play in this control mirror. <laughs> no, just... Content with swinging in there, one point of damage to the Narset. Narset essentially commits Sudoku and uh, still manages to find something useful, though. Off the top of the library. Finding a Teferi is pretty good, and Mahdi is starting to put together a potential position where he can play Teferi with counter backup, even going for it just here. However, yes, he does have the veto, but... Yuda has another Shark Typhoon available to him, <laughs> as well as the Hall of Storm Giants, so he certainly has ways to get this Teferi off the board now. Yeah, I don't think Teferi is long for this world. There is the possibility of getting a Baby Shark down, to jump in the way of one of these threats. But that's a big old shark. That's a 5-5. Five five. That's a 5-5, five five and backed up by a March of Otherworldly Light and a Fateful Absence in Yuta Takahashi's uh -huh. hand. Uh, the story that Mari might have been trying to tell of Archmage's Charm, I don't think Yuta's <laughs> buying that story anymore. I, I think if this shark doesn't attempt to get stolen, Yuta's going to have a pretty good idea that the Archmage's Charm is not there. Yeah. So with Fateful Absence as backup in case the shark doesn't hit. What is Quizma going to do here? Does he value trying to keep Teferi alive or is he just going to let the old time mage die? It, it's tough. He may think that perhaps he can try to force through a hard cast shark typhoon and just <laughs> let Teferi go. Use his Dovin's Veto for that. And... That will work out okay because he'll have the veto for the march if that's going to be used as a counter spell. But he's facing some pressure right now, so this game is <laughs> still looking a little tough for Mari. Another Teferi hero of Dominaria arriving just in time. But you call it Hardcore Shark Typhoon. Let's go. Yeah, at some point you have to do something, and Yuda has the removal spell, but he doesn't have the answer right now so the shark typhoon is going to hit the battlefield and that's important because when yuda tries to remove it with march which i don't think we're going to get there quite yet thanks to odawara uh but if he does Mari would have gotten the token from the dovin's veto as 
is, this is sort of buying Yuta an entire turn where Madi didn't really do anything. Yeah, that's true. Unfortunately, the channel abilities can't be countered by Dovin's veto, so that's going to have to find another target. I'm really curious if Yuta's interested in just firing up this Hall of Storm Giants and just sending a huge attack here, knowing Mahdi doesn't really have the mana to pay for Ward if he has mm -hmm. something like March of Otherworldly Light. So trying to chunk through a lot of damage here might be more valuable than the Snarset. I'm with you on that one. Takahashi's going to go for Narset, though. Take a look at a couple cards on top of the library and see what interaction he can find. Oh, let's see Marty just got. has to watch. <laughs> Marty hit too hard earlier. Let's see if he <laughs> was able to find something like an Archmage's Charm or another Counterspell. Some form of interaction here. He is covered against the first two sharks that come out. I do see there's a Teferi in that grouping of cards, but what is he exactly looking for here is the question. Oh, Wandering Emperor. Very nice. Yeah, Up against good. the Teferi. Does have an instant speed threat when he wants it. All right, let's try again. Hardcore Shark Typhoon, go! Yeah, this time you definitely want to respond. If your opponent wants to Dovin's Veto this, you want to make sure that they can't do so while getting a shark. And mm -hmm. if it resolves, well, Madi doesn't have that much here. The rest of piece will make a 2-2 shark. <laughs> but if Yuta just wants to try removing these sharks, he might actually just have enough damage. And Haley, I think if Yuta just goes for it here, if he just yeah. makes a 2-2 from the Wandering Emperor, End Step uses Fateful Absence to remove that shark, and then mm -hmm. untaps, puts a counter on a small shark, activates Hall of Storm Giants, there's nothing Mahdi can do. I don't think so. This Dovin's Veto can create another shark and protect the one in play. But yeah, there's... Yuta will just untap after making this 2-2, yeah. Use the march for mana, one mana to get rid of one token. Animate the Hall of Storm Giants. Even if the 2-2 jumps in front of the 7-7, seven, seven, the plus one plus one counter from Wandering Emperor is going to be enough for nine exact damage for Yuta to take this first game. <laughs> Impressively navigated here by Yuta Takahashi. March of Otherworldly Light available to him. Double, triple, quadruple checking the math. Yeah, just, just got to make sure that, you know, there's enough mana to pop up the Hall of Storm Giants as well. Yeah. Just mouse over the hall. Make yep. sure. Make Emperor sure. Emperor putting the counter. <laughs> yeah, don't put the counter on the 7-7. Seven, seven. You can yep. aim anywhere else. Just don't. <laughs> Muddy waits, makes sure he puts the... Okay, now we're done. There you go. Yeah, now, now we're done. So game number two, let's go check out the sideboard. What is the game plan here for Muddy Quizma? Well, this is actually my favorite part of Control Mirrors is mm -hmm. after game one. Because now all the rest in pieces and the angers and the removal spell, all of that is gone. And now both players are sort of operating in their ideal form, their final form. So we have <laughs> the Malevolent Hermits are now in the deck. We have four vetoes from one side, three vetoes from the other. Everybody has their counter spells. And this is when the game gets really exciting. This exciting is my in quotes. I know farm, Goku. <laughs> <laughs> See, three copies of Fry from Mari Quizma. Uh, maybe this isn't the matchup that you're exactly envisioning, but considering those planeswalkers could use some uncounterable five damage to them, uh, yeah. it's still going to be pretty good. Yeah, planeswalkers are a pain in the butt, let's be honest. Because, you know, if that's on the battlefield, taken up or down, or whatever way they go, you're not winning for the most part. So, Mari's still taking some time. Thinking through the decisions, uh, this Jeskai control deck does have Kahira the Orphan Guard as its companion, so no creatures to be found anywhere in this deck. There are obviously creatures you could play. 
We're just not really interested in those ones. We could just call this a token deck then, right? Just got tokens. Yeah, basically. Sharks. Just got sharks. <laughs> and samurais. <gasps> samurais on sharks. Ooh, that'll be cool. Oh my gosh, what's with these lands? He's gonna keep it again. You are a brave, brave soul. Yeah, I mean, if you're expecting your opponent to not really pressure you, then keep the lands, make the land drops, find the spells, and you'll be okay. And, you know, I don't think Monty's problem last game was flooding too hard, so no. I think this is a very reasonable keep in his spot. Control decks love their lands. Not going for the Rogue and Triumph on turn two, though. Wanting to cycle away that irrigated farmland on the end step here. So let's see what the top of the deck holds. Ooh, express... What? The, that's just exactly what he needed. Pretty good one. There is, a, there is a mystical dispute in hand, though, for Takahashi, so this is just likely to get countered, would you say? Yeah, I, I would guess so. Takahashi does have a bit of an awkward draw, considering that Glacial Fortress doesn't come into play untapped. Juari mm -hmm. Ruins in Glacial Fortress, not islands. They're not going to give you an untapped land. So unless Yuta finds an untapped blue source, he won't have Archmage's Charm next turn. But fortunately for him, Mahdi ran out the Narset there rather than the Express of Iteration. So now it's not the biggest deal if Takahashi has to put the shields down for a turn. So Wandering Emperor was the draw. Second copy to hand here for Yuta Takahashi. Gonna look to Omen of the Sea to give the old scry. And uh, let's see what he's looking for on top of the library here if we can. I would guess number one priority is lands in the spot. Things like Dovin's Veto mm -hmm. would be very good. Mystical Dispute, more copies of Archmage's Charm. Uh, but if he can find an untapped blue source here that he would be able to play, that would be fantastic just because it would represent another mystical dispute, which would yeah. give Mahdi some pause depending on what his hand is. Fortunately, no untapped blue. Memory Deluge comes at the top of the library, giving Mahdi Quizma the opportunity to cast Expressive Iteration. Doesn't find a land, but he's certainly not short of them. And Shark Typhoon, Teferi, and March of Otherworldly Lights are the options available to him. Yeah, this is becoming a common problem for Mahdi to sort of hit too hard with these cards. <laughs> and in this position, this is hitting a little too hard because he's only able to get one of these cards to hand and doesn't have enough mana or resources to cast the second one. So this is the worst case scenario for Expressive Iteration. You're losing out on a good card that you could have drawn when you're in this sort of flood position and you only get one card off. The four lands down, courtesy of Aiganjo. Another memory delusion hand. So certainly plenty of things for Takahashi to do on the end step here. And no real way to answer it for Mari Quizma. Yeah, this is sort of the dream situation for Takahashi because you can really respond to what your opponent's doing. Making land drops is still priority number one. So I like opening on Deluge. Try to find two lands if possible. There you go. Beautiful for Takahashi. <laughs> now he has another Deluge. Two copies of Wandering Emperor, an Archmage's Charm, and a Mystical Dispute. So everything is looking really good for Yuta now. Is it that Castle Vantress going to be relied on here for Mighty Quizma to try and find something useful on top of the library? Now, Teferi and Expressive Iteration are two very, very good cards. Which one does he want to find first? Yeah, you're going to want both of them. It really toying with the order. Part of the problem with putting Expressive Iteration on top and drawing it is you don't want to cast it next turn because Teferi is going to be one of those three cards. So you're not going to be able to cast Teferi, which means Teferi is just going to come to your hand if you want it, like we saw last time. And then that means what if you find a counter spell among those? You're also not going to be able to do that. Wandering Emperor hits the battlefield. Creating the 2-2 Samurai. And we may just see a pass here to the end step. Maybe a big Shark Typhoon for Mighty Quizma. There's a Plains for Yuta, so he is finding his lands. Yeah, beautiful decision from Takahashi. Goes for the Wandering Emperor while uh, Mahdi decides to tap out on uh, Takahashi's end step, knowing that, okay, the worst thing that can happen to me on six mana is Teferi. I still have a Mystical Dispute, so my opponent needs to have Teferi plus Mystical Dispute of their own. And if that happens, 
I still have this Wandering Emperor resolved. I'm still able to do things. So the worst case scenario doesn't look that bad for me. And I get to resolve my planes. Oh, this is amazing. Takahashi firmly in the driver's seat right now. Can the Shark Typhoon get Mighty Quizma back into it? As a 4 4 will be left on the battlefield, Teferi will be drawn to hand. But he's going to need a lot for him to go right if he wants to get his way back into this game. Yeah, Mighty needs some help from the top of his deck. And Ailey, again, we keep talking about this, but there was that fantastic feature on this Japanese testing team. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that they mentioned was Yuta's roll. <laughs> Dex the play at instant speed. Yes. That, that, that's, that's his job on this team. That's his specialty. Yep. And it has been for the last 20 or so years <laughs> of just mastering instant speed decks. And mm. when you put Yuta Takahashi in a position where he can sit behind Memory Deluges and Archmage's Charms and Wandering Emperors, a amazing new card that I'm sure he was ecstatic about, <laughs> this is his home. This is his mm. realm. And you are just a guest here. <laughs> I do love that analogy. He is certainly an expert at instant speed shenanigans. And here comes expressive iteration for Mighty Quizma. Doesn't get to keep the shark as much of otherworldly light says no, thank you very much. Archmage's charm and a mystical dispute available to Takahashi if he wants to fight over this. Curious to see if he does. Don't think so. Yeah, lets it go. Finds a veto and another expressive iteration. So not the worst case scenario here for Mahdi. Is it doing anything to affect the board this turn? But is at least able to stock up a bit for future turns if he wants. Yeah. So Mystical Dispute's going to get fired off here without three mana up to pay for it. Now that is a card that gets worse as the game progresses. So he won't be too sad about that. Yeah, Yuda would be ecstatic for Mahdi to use a counter spell on that mystical dispute, <laughs> considering he didn't have the mana to pay. Yep. Ooh. Hey, Ailey, this is getting scary for Mahdi Kuzma, as <laughs> Yuda is not running out of gas or cards that are good in the matchup anytime soon, and these memory deluges are just putting in work here. <laughs> they sure are. Another counter spell, the better one between the two into hand now for Yuta Takahashi. So yeah, that's basically a, a permanope. So if Teferi wants to come on down, it's going to get countered. And things looking very, very good here for the reigning world champion. Yeah, and I think Yuta's soon going to be in a position, maybe just here, where he can just play this Odawara as a land because he's mm -hmm. going to value having more mana more than just having access to this bounce spell effect on this land. And the pressure is mounting up and... You know, this is sort of the downside of post-board control mirrors. You have to have cards that are good in the matchup, but if you start falling behind on board, sometimes it can be hard to get back in because you don't have those Anger of the Gods. You don't have Wrath of God anymore. Hmm. I like the idea of getting the Ottawara down. Leaves up Archmage's Charm as well as Dervin's Veto. Let's see what Takahashi thinks. <laughs> Pose combat make, counter. Make the Hermit a bit bigger. Play the Odawara. Fry, not bad, but there isn't a single card on this board that matters too much. Wandering Emperor, obviously good. You'd like to get it off the board, but the damage is sort of already done from the Wandering Emperor. Yeah. You know, there's three creatures that are presenting seven damage, half of your life total. And this is Mahdi making sure to play Teferi with Dovin's Veto up. But Yuda has a Dovin's Veto of his own. Yuda has an Archmage's Charm. And the Malevolent Hermit is back up. So if Mahdi goes Archmage's Charm, and uh, if Yuda goes Archmage's Charm, and Mahdi responds with Dovin's Veto, well... <laughs> That's fine, because Malevolent Hermit can then just counter the Teferi. This is tough. This is a very sticky situation here for Mighty Quizma. He's down a game right now, has to win this to keep this match going. And Mahdi's feeling the pressure from all angles because not only is he feeling the life total pressure, but he feels like he needs to do something because if 
he continues giving Yuta room. Yuta has these two memory delusions in the graveyard waiting to be flashed back, and those are each going to refill his hand with two more cards that probably matter. You're looking <laughs> through seven, you're probably going to find two that matters, and then what are you going to do with the limited resources you have available to you? Hey, that's a podcast. Not today it isn't. <laughs> Another land down on the battlefield for Takahashi. Plenty of mana to work with. Teferi, Wandering Emperor number two, the Deluges, as you mentioned, and Dovin's Veto to protect or to prevent anything of importance being cast by Mighty Quizma. Yeah, Yuta could go for a counter here. I wouldn't be surprised for him to just make another token and pass the turn. You have another Wandering Emperor in hand. You have a Dovin's mm -hmm. Veto in hand. You have two Deluges in your graveyard and you have the Malevolent Hermit activation, it feels like Yuta just has all bases covered here. <laughs> you could sense the frustration here from Muddy. He's like, what am I supposed to do with this card? Sure, it's uncountable, but it's not really doing all that much for me. But rah. yeah, I feel you, man. I've been in this situation. I think we all have. Yeah, just roll the dice. All of them sort of feel like they matter. They about the same amount you don't really want to kill the hermit because it can just come back as benevolent geist and then mm -hmm. all of their spells are uncounterable and that doesn't yeah. feel really great either so it, it, it just feels really bad to be in monoquism spot right now yeah it sure does <sighs> so if he doesn't kill these creatures, oh, he's just going to concede. So I, 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 I don't blame you for that. That's just <laughs> way too much pressure on the battlefield. Yuta Takahashi picking up a clean 2-0 there against Mighty Quizman.